What's the word, y'all? Uh, just, just you know, we had gang, and, and you won't be able to see my eyes for the next couple videos. And it, it is what it is, all right? So I was on my way home from San Francisco, and while we were 40,000 feet in the air, I was thinking about the NBA All-Stars. The NBA All-Star draft was on the Thursday. I was flying home on Friday. And I was just thinking about it, man. 24 equally deserving players were announced as the best performing players of their conference and they're going to represent their team in their city and Cleveland this year. But every time we have an all-star game, there is going to be a list of snubs, a list of players that deserve some love but weren't able to make it into the game. So I decide, what if I put together a third and a fourth all-star team? 12 more players in the East, 12 more players in the West who are deserving of maybe some all-star considerations but didn't necessarily get there so i was like you know what yeah let's prep that let's prep that and today i got home and i'm like this is a lot harder than you think you know like they're gonna be the obvious ones the people that de may have deserved to actually be a real all-star the locks of the top 48 or whatever you want to call it um but once you get to that bottom it's a bit difficult, man. So people talk about snubs for the first 24. So I know for sure there are going to be people in my comment section talking about what about this guy for the first 48. Hey, man, if you don't make the first 48 in this video, my apologies, bro. I don't even know what else to tell you. I don't know what else to tell you, all right? So there's no real order to this. And since I am the general manager, this is my list. There's no position locks. Because I've been trying to get rid of that for half a decade now. When in my universe, there is no position locks. These are just the next 12 players in the conference that I deserve, well, I think deserve some love. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Hit that link in the description. Use code Kenny because they're matching up to $100 deposits for all new players. Y'all know how easy Prize Picks is. It's just you versus the numbers. You pick anywhere between two to five of your favorite players and you pick the over and under on statistics. Now, today is Sunday. I'm not really worried about that. There's a two game slate in the NBA. As, as I'm recording this, they don't have the, the over unders on game number two, but let me just show you how easy it can be. I just created this randomly. I could pick over and under on Trey Young, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, all these players. And you get to pick between flex and power. Flex means that if one thing is wrong, you can still walk out with at least 1.5x or power play. You need all four to hit, but you walk out with 10x. Price Picks is great because they run a bunch of different promos every single week. Um, they have like Taco Tuesdays where a person's points, assists, rebounds might be significantly lower than what it normally is because it's supposed to be a free, a freebie, a layup, and it's weekend. Sunday, y'all. So if you want to get in and do football or do some esports, there's a lot of different possibilities with Prize Picks. So join the thousands of people that have already used Code Kenny. Download Prize Picks and get hundred dollars up to hundred dollars matched with your first deposit. I appreciate Prize Picks. It's weird because I opened up my Twitter account and I be seeing myself doing promotions for Prize Picks. You feel me? I'm part of the family. You can be too. The East was a lot easier today, dude, meaning that there were more players to choose from. Out West, you're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel when you talk about the next 12 players because there are so many injuries in the Western Conference. Uh, I did have a little bit of a rubric in this one, you know what I'm saying? So like Paul George or Damian Lillard, who would have an all-star season but have been missing time or currently injured, are not on this list. But, hey, it is my list. Let me know in the comment section of some people that I might have missed. Let's get into it as we start to talk about the Eastern Conference. My absolute lock at the top of the thing. This might be... Oh, I should I should anoint captains, shouldn't I? Because that's how the... Re oh, let's anoint captains. Now, this is the hard part. So, my absolute lock, number one, was Jared Allen. Because, in my mind, Jared Allen deserves to be in the real All-Star game. It is what it is. But... My captain is between him and Pascal Siakam for the Easter Conference. I think if we go on by the NBA's tradition of votes, I would say Pascal would get more, but did Pascal get more? All right, in the Eastern Conference front court, Jared Allen was just a little bit above Pascal Siakam. So Jared Allen will be my team captain for the second squad of the Eastern Conference. Absolute lock. I don't need to give you the argument. He's an elite level defender on, on if not, I don't know, they might not be the best defense in the league after after Joel Embiid's gave him a 40-point triple-double. But they're one of the best defensive teams in the entire league. And Jared Allen is the focal point of the rim protection there. I incredible lob threat. And he's expanding his game every single day, it feels like. Lock. Lock number two, in my opinion. Let's talk about Pascal Siakam, man. Every time I stream on Twitch, there's there's a Raptor fan or two or three or six spamming in my chat. Kenny, have you been watching Pascal Siakam? And the answer is yes. I don't understand this obsession. And this is not specific to Raptors fans, but y'all do this a lot. We're like, y'all believe that people ain't watching or the diehard NBA fans ain't watching. Like, sure, the casual fan might not be watching Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, Gary Trent Jr., OG, I don't know, Scotty Barnes. But a diehard NBA fan is keeping up with the Raptors just as much as they're keeping up with the next team. So, yes, I've been watching Pascal Siakam. I've been seeing his absolute tear that he's on. 
He's been playing the playmaker role for, for this team. And there's just a bunch of wings that can defend. And Pascal is doing his thing and finding open teammates. Pascal, if it wasn't for his very early injuries. Like, this is the way I think about it. If you aren't necessarily one of the absolute top guys of the season, you need to do a lot for people not to forget your name. In a sense that Pascal Siaka missed the first X amount of games of the season. And because of that, once he did come back, if he wasn't out there dropping 30s a night, people weren't going to really pay attention to him when it comes to voting and when it comes to all-star appearance. He's played 42 games of the season, but that is more. I'm looking at the reserves. He's played more games this season than Jimmy Butler has. He's played the exact amount of games as Luka Doncic. He's played the amount of games as Rudy Gobert. The point I'm making is that there are all-star players that played the same amount of time as Pascal Siakam, but it's about when you miss the time. I mean, I don't really have a crazy argument of, of Chris Middleton making it over Pascal Siakam other than at the time of these things, um, the Bucks were higher in the standings, and I guess they still are higher in the standings. It's not about that much. It, it is what it is. Pascal Siakam is on team two, you feel me? And that's fine. Um, player number three that I think is a lock, on my second team is Drew Holiday, man. If I was picking pick between um, Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday, who I, des I think deserves to make the All-Star game more, it is going to be Drew Holiday. But I keep hearing people say like, oh, I'm surprised that the Colts just picked uh, Middleton over Drew. And they're not really thinking about the position thing. Chris Middleton is a forward. Drew Holiday is a guard. There's a lot of competition at the guard position. So that's why Drew Holiday didn't make it. In this list, he does make it. I don't need to explain that one. Jalen Brown. Don't need to explain it. JB is that man. Next, this is where we start to get into the territory of maybe an argument. Well, okay, uh, 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 Miles Bridges. Let's talk about Miles Bridges. Um, incredible start to the season. He was the front runner for most improved player. Probably going to John Morant now. We, we don't really know how the, how the voters are going to look at John Morant as far as like, is he already a step ahead of winning the award, a most improved player? I don't really know, but he's still in conversation for a most improved player for him jumping onto the scene, averaging over 20 points per game. Um, and just overall, just being an electric, electric player. Oh, I'm sorry. After last game, he's averaging... Do 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 19.9. So he's not even in the 20 point per game ball club. He's a scrub. He cannot be on this list. But he is on this list. Next one. Okay, so there are gonna be a few players on this list that 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 are heavily recency biased, right? Because as of right now, as I'm recording this video, this player is hot, and they've had moments in the season where they were hot, but probably more likely than not, they're not hot. This is uh this is maybe some homerism, some biases coming into it, but it's my list. Who gives a damn, right? Nikola Vucevic on the season averaging these numbers haven't been updated because he had another good game today. But as I'm recording, 17.7, 12, about 12 rebounds, 4 assists. And in the, in the recent X amount of games, he's been absolutely incredible again. Now, the defense is something that you never ask Nikola Vucevic to do. But if his offensive game is making up for it, then you're excited about that. And Chicago was excited that Vucevic is back because in the very early stages of the season, he was looking extremely bad. And I know there's a there's a learning curve of having all these new players trying to see who's going to find him, who's not going to find him, where is he going to find his shots. Uh, the early stage of the season was, was pretty bad. But recently, he found his like dynamic duo, which is crazy. Him and Zach Levine had a little two-man game coming back from last season when the trade happened. Their two-man game is decent. But now it's Ayo DeSumo. Ayo DeSumo and Nikola Vucevic's two-man game is elite. <laughs> Legit. He be finding Vucci, man. In places that other Bulls players haven't been able to find him. And because of that, his stats have been incredible. He's been catching posters. He's been hitting big shots. I'm getting Vucevic a nod here. Does he deserve to be here? It's my list. I don't care. Man, you're going to start to think, like, who is his real competition? I got a short list of players that didn't make it. And I'm taking Vucevic's season over these other players that didn't make it. Okay, Vucevic on the team. Next player. Bam out of bio. Bam out of bio. One of the better defenders in this league. Um, I was looking at some advanced statistics. There are a couple of advanced statistic um Twitter accounts that I follow. And and I always been the guy that likes advanced statistics, but it also is a way. How do I say this? I don't like the people that have advanced statistics, and that is their only argument for NBA anything. They're not using the eye test, it is just analytics. But I also hate the people that only use the high test. They got they got to be a split there. I ain't saying it's 50-50. Maybe it's 65% uh, I and 35% analytics. There has to be a combination of the two. And Bam Adebayo passes all these. So one of the advanced stats that I saw, and it was ranking. Actually, I could just show you the stat. What am I acting like I'm not on this crazy PC for? You don't even need a crazy PC to look at stats on the internet. What am I talking about? So here it is. Only 10 players in the 2021-2022 centers are in the top 20% of our playmaking talent metric. 
Don't ask me how they get these stats. It's B-Ball Index. Jokic is number one, which makes sense. The advanced stats say it, and with the eye test say that the Jokic is the best passing center in the entire NBA. Then all getting A's is Joel B, Carl Anthony Towns, Bam Adebayo, Nemanja Bjelica, Alperin Sengun, and then Sabonis. And then you got some A-minuses here. But Bam, according to this ranking, is the fourth best playmaking center in the entire NBA, and that checks out as the eye test. Defense is still elite. It seemed like every single night somebody puts up a new stat line talking about how Bam Adebayo has been holding his defenders to 38% around whatever. All of that checks out. Only th My big complaint about Bam Adebayo, and I've said this for a few seasons now, I wish he shot the ball more. I can't complain because they're, they're the number one team in the Eastern Conference. They find a way to win um, regardless. But I just feel like if Bam was slightly more aggressive, man, people would be talking about Bam like they talk about some of the other centers across the league. He is another all-star and actually while we're here i know people are upset that this is a different all-star list and not the kenny freer all-stars and you know what i was trying to put together a video of the kenny freer all-stars and what i found out is there's not 24 kenny freer all-stars it's not so i could get you on my 15th kenny freer all-stars if you want me to but it's not 24 i feel like i would be watering down my pot if i was just adding players just because i needed to reach a number you feel me so maybe we'll make that video another day um let's get to my next now those are the players that in my mind 100 deserve to be here after that, it can be a little bit iffy. Number one player. After Bam Adebayo, I'm just going to pair them together because they're teammates. It is Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero has taken the next step that I believe that a, a lot of NBA fans thought that he needed to take for the Miami Heat to hit that next step. Because last season definitely was a big regression for him. Especially when you consider in the bubble that people were calling him... Um, a lot of different Knicks names were revolving around him being just elite. And he was elite in that bubble. But then he came back to the next season, and he wasn't bad by any means, but he hadn't, hadn't hit that next step that they needed him to take. And this season, he has done that. And since he's done that, he's made this team a lot more, more difficult to guard because they do so many different things. He's made this team so much more viable once playoff time comes around if they can get the bubble the bubble version of Tyler Hero because he's playing similar to that every single night. He's averaging over 20 points per game off the bench. He might be the winner of six man of the year so far, but like Kevin Love has to say about that and some other players. But he's in the conversations and he's been very, very elite. He's been one of the very easy, steady guys of this entire season for them. Let's get to, to some spiciness. The only rookie... To make my second tier All-Stars. And this is going to grab some gears because y'all be going crazy over this whole rookie ladder thing for some reason. The only rookie to make my second tier All-Star list was Evan Mobley. Evan Mobley. I don't, and I, I'm not just saying this because I'm living in the moment. But I don't think I've ever seen a rookie in my own personal viewing experience. I didn't get to see rookie Tim Duncan. I, I wasn't watching basketball back then. But I, I don't think I've ever seen a rookie be so good on the defensive side of the ball. Every time I watch Evan Mobley, even if he's putting up six points or he's putting up a 20-piece, I'm amazed on just one of the things that he ends up doing in that. You know, he was a better playmaker than I ever anticipated him to be on that short role as a rookie. And it just feels like he can guard all five positions. Now, I, I don't want to say he's there just yet because there's a very select few players in the NBA that legitimately can guard all five positions, but I see it, you know? I seen in the very early stages of his career, he was guarding Trey Young for a couple possessions. And out of the three possessions, I remember, he got to stop two of the times. You, you know what I'm saying? Some of the best perimeter defenders in the league struggled to get two of the three stops for Trey Young. And Evan Mobley was doing those things. Um, and I think that right now, I wouldn't say he's hit the rookie wall, but he hasn't been as incredible as of recently than earlier in the season. But he's still on this list because, again, once we get towards the bottom of this, things get kind of weird. You feel me? It's like... It ain't, it ain't always uh, sunshine and roses at the bottom of this list. So if you've been counting, those are nine different players that we've talked about. The last three were super hard. And and, and the, the people that didn't make the cut, Julius Randle, not having an amazing season. Recently, they've been playing really good. And then today, they blew a crazy lead to the uh, to to the Portland Trail Blazers. And he, was, he has some good counting stats, but he wasn't very good. And I watched him live and San Francisco at the Warriors game, and he had an amazing, amazing game. And every time I watch him and he's not doing that like he was last year, I'm like, what are you doing, bro? Those turnaround contested mid-range jump shots ain't, ain't falling. And in the Warriors game, he was getting to the basket, drawing fouls, and finishing. Why don't we just do that more, more often than the turnaround? So he didn't make the cut. R.J. Barrett did not make the cut. You hear me erasing him off the list. Did not make the cut. Tyrese spent the majority of his season, obviously, in the Western Conference, he did not make the cut, even though he was very, very close. The last three people to make it in. All right? Let's 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 have this conversation. The last three people to make it in. Gary Trent Jr., Tyrese Maxey, 
and Ricky Rubio fight me. This is my list. I know Ricky Rubio has missed like a month of basketball at this point. Ricky Rubio is on my list. Fight me. It's, it's my list. Gary Trent Jr., if I'm not mistaken, is still uh, leading the league in steals per game. There is an amazing article that I saw on my timeline, and it's unfortunate because I didn't get the author. Um, and you know what? Let me give credit where it's due. I will spend the next 20 minutes if I have to finding this article that I read while I was on my way from my Uber to my hotel. Hold on. I'm so upset I'm sitting here scrolling to find this tweet from like, oh man, what am I doing here? Legit, what am I, what day is this? Yes, 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 that's what you t use Twitter for. Twitter can find it for you, yes. Okay, we got it, we got it. Thank you to everybody on Twitter, I appreciate you. I needed to give him my credit where it was due. So the name of the article is Gary Trent is the world's best grenadier. Grenader. You you decide how you want to pronounce it. And it's by Samson Folk. I'll put it in the description if I remember. If not, search this up. Samson did an amazing job. Even over this absurd stretch where he's averaging 28 points per game, he takes less touches than everyone else in the Raptors starting lineup. Less than Scotty Barnes. Less than OG Ananobi. And his points per touch doubles everyone except for OG Ananobi, dog. This mo this mofo right here, when he gets the ball, he knows what to do with the dog. So he is a he is an all star, second tier all star. Anyway, so we got Gary Trent Jr. Uh, Tyrese Maxey, in my mind, un well, until the James Harden trade, has been the second best player for the uh, Joel Embiid led Philadelphia 76ers closed out games. He's electric. He's super fun to watch. And those are the things that can get you on his list. And then lastly, Ricky Rubio. I don't need to explain. I've been on the Ricky Rubio fan page for the entire season. Yes, he cut out some people that might deserve to be here. I literally do not care. Let's talk about the Western Conference, man, because we have 12 people here. And, and this is a bit weird. So my locks. These are my locks. Anthony Davis. Miss some time. Regardless, Anthony Davis has been really good this season. I know that may be less than expectations because the three-point shooting hasn't been there or just his long twos haven't been there. But defensively, he's been uh, better than he has been in the previous season. And overall, I just think that his game has maybe been overshadowed because the team has been so bad. Next player on the locks for the Western Conference is Anthony Edwards. Um, the only thing that's holding Anthony Edwards back in his sophomore season, remember, this is his sophomore season, bro, he's only 20 years old, which is scary to even think about, is that he'll have a game where he had 35, and the next game he'll have seven. You know, <laughs> he'll have seven. And his three-point percentage is not very good, but he takes a ton of them, so he makes a ton of them. It's, it's a very weird spot, but Anthony Edwards, if we're talking about players that, like, need to be mic'd up all the time, give Anthony Edwards that thing 100% of the time. He is a tier two all-star in my book. I mean, the bro ordered McDonald's after a game. I guess that was his cheat meal. Or maybe bro just eat like that. Remember, he's 20 years old. When I was 20 years old, I could eat anything I want and not feel any consequences. And now I'm 25 years old and I have one meal out of the ordinary and it tears me up. You feel me? I used to eat legit. I used to eat like flaming hots nonstop. Just hot chips, hot things in general. I would make the 20 cent noodles and go crazy with the Louisianas in there. And I can't do that. I can't even touch spicy food at the age of 25. I can't, I can't even do it no more. So he needs to fix things by he, before he's my age and he can't go back. Next player is Jaron Jackson Jr. Man, I've been seeing a lot of players and uh, people at Memphis Grizzlies Twitter and even the Memphis Grizzlies players and themselves like John Morant pushing for Jaron Jackson Jr. to be a defensive player of the conversations. And though he has been amazing defensively, I just don't think he's there just yet. Uh, but the offense is starting to come around a little bit more too when they had the injuries going on with their team and he was slotted into that five position. I saw the vision, bro. And it made me super excited because if he can be the center of your team and not be in foul trouble and defend the way he does, the ceiling of that team is kind of crazy, man. The ceiling of that team is very, very crazy. The, the little slingshot jump shot or the baby jump shot that they always say, it be falling. And when it's falling, there's not a lot of people that's better at that point. Next to our package deal, they're, they're on the best team in the league and they already got two all-stars on this team, but two more of those starters deserve some love, and that is Mikael Bridges. Even though Mikael Bridges is averaging, like, what, 14 points per game in the season, he's still having elite-level defense. He's still all-defensive first team, in my opinion. I'm, well, I need to go back and think about it, but he is a player that is, uh, in, in conversations, as first team all-defense on the wings position, those four positions, and he also can get you buckets. And right now, currently, he's on a pretty good streak. So, yeah, this month so far, they've played two, four, six, seven games. They've only lost one of them. Mikael Bridges is averaging 20 points per game, right? Insane. When you think about Mikael Bridges, you'd be like, oh, he's a 3 and D guy. He's not getting it from the three-point line, y'all. Bro's running the transition. He's low-key sometimes creating his own shot. He's cutting back door. He's shooting only 33% from three in the month, and he's averaging a dub. 
He's evolving his game to be no more than a 3 and D dude. I do want him to get that three-point percentage up, though, Mikhail. Let's come on. <laughs> come on. We do still need you to hit threes, you feel me? But he's been incredible this season. Uh, DeAndre Aiden, his case is getting a little bit worse and worse. Um, He just had that very, very dominant game against the Bucs, which helps. But, like, the fact that Bismack Biombo came to the team and looked amazing, and that Jalen Smith looked good in the minutes he was given, and then JaVale McGee looks great as a backup center, it hurts him just a little bit because Chris Paul does get the most out of his centers. But when he is playing amazing... He is the absolute X factor for this entire organization. And for them to get to that point where they want to win this championship, which is obviously the aspirations, they need him to be great. And when he is great, there's not a lot of teams that can stop them when he's playing great. Next one is Brandon Ingram. Um, I thought he might be the replacement for Draymond Green if they were to give it to another forward. He's been really good this season. Very low-key. Brandon Ingram has been a very low-key player for his, his entire career. But the fact that he played in LA for the first couple seasons made him not low-key. But he's just not a dude that talks a lot. He goes out there and hoops. And he goes home. You feel me? And he's still out there hooping. Now, this is where things get weird. Because Sabonis has only played two games in the Western Conference. But he's on the Western Conference team. He would be on the Eastern Conference team if he was still in the Eastern Conference. But Sabonis, even though he was not an All-Star this season, everybody recognizes that Demont Sabonis is one of the best big men in the entire league. And low-key... These two games have been really good. It looks like him and De'Aaron Fox have been playing together way longer than two games. Their two-man game is way better than I expected it to be. Which is a good sign for the Sacramento Kings for them to potentially make that push. Two-game win streak, and the fans have quickly turned around from, ah, I hate this, to like, this ain't that bad. You know, Reese had an amazing game in his first uh, appearance with the Indiana Pacers, but this ain't that bad. We're on a two-game losing streak, and I'm looking at it right now. When it comes to the play-in, they're only a game and a half out. The unfortunate part is that the Trailblazers won two games against, I think, the Lakers and then um, then the Knicks. So, so they still keep them afloat. And then C.J. McCollum and the Pelicans haven't won since the trade. I'm sure they're going to figure that out and win a little bit more. And the Spurs are still in conversations. But the fact that you are on a two-game winning streak and you look good gelling. Now, you haven't played elite-level competition just yet, but it has looked good. The defense... It's just a bit of rejuvenation now having all these new guys into the locker room. You can definitely tell that. So Sabonis is in there. And you know what? Similarly, similarly to what I said about uh, Nikola Vucevic, I'm putting De'Aaron Fox here too. De'Aaron Fox has not had an amazing season by any means. But recently, he's been looking really good. Since he came back from that injury, and since they traded Tyrese Halliburton, you're getting the version of De'Aaron Fox that we got last season that was averaging 25 points per game. So the fact that he's had a lot of ups and downs in the season, and currently he is on an up, I'm putting him on my list. Fight me if you want. To. Well, don't. Actually, don't fight me. Don't do that. I'm not really into that type of thing. Shea Gilgis Alexander might not be having the same efficiency season, but let me go look at the stats. 23 points per game, 5.5 assists, 5 rebounds. I do round up for these boys. Um, but yeah, efficiency has been there, right? He's been a career 35% three-point shooter. This year, he's shooting 28%. He's been a career 46% from the field guy. And this year, he's shooting 42%. I'm not really worried about that when it comes to Shea Alexander because eventually, when we get to, you know, OKC being good in 12 years or how long it's going to take them to be good, um, he's not going to have to do all of the things that he does. He is still one of the elite getting to the basket guys in the entire league. Now, he has to settle for creating his own shot 100% of the time, it seems like right now. Josh Giddy does alleviate some pain um, a little bit. But he, he's a guy that has to create for himself majority of the time. And once they get to the point where Giddy is better or whoever they draft, one of the seven draft picks they got this season becomes good and he's not relied to be the focal point and the only dude in the offense, I'm expecting him to be better when it comes to his efficiency. And even though his efficiency is down, he still has moments this season. And I think moments go a long way. You know what I'm saying? I can think of off the top just clutch moments of this season for Shea Gilles Alexander. And I think that, you know, that has to, to mean something. All right. Now we're down to our last three spots. And this is where things get a bit weird um, because there's no, like, locks. And I'm going to go ahead and show some love to, to one of the more underrated centers in the entire league. Actually, it was two fighting for this spot. It was Jonas Valanciunas, who at one point was leading the league with 50% from the uh, three-point line. It's not there anymore. And... The guy that I gave it to, the guy that I gave it to, Jakob Pertl. People say it rhymes with turtle, so it's Pertl. Um, one of the most underrated players in the entire league, bro. It's, it's legitimate. And when there was rumors that the Chicago Bulls were in conversations to maybe get Jakob Pertl, I was like, give me that. You feel me? I would love to root for Jakob Pertl. But instead, they decided to keep him, which is probably the best thing if nobody's giving you the value that you expect to get for him because he is such 
a guy that even though he's not a dude that's jumping 12 feet in the air to get blocks, he, he is a good pay protector. I be saying this on the channel all the time. There's a difference between the rim protector. Those are the dudes that's like getting hella blocks. Those are the, the Jaron Jackson Juniors. Those are the Hassan Whiteside in his prime. And then the paint protectors. Those are the Al Horfords or the guys that positionally just do a great job protecting the paint. And Yaka Perto is in that case as well. Bro don't hit free throws. And he doesn't score a ton. But I think his defense is super undervalued in the NBA. And he deserves to be on this list. He, he's, he's a candy for all-star. And he's a second-tier all-star in my mind. And these last two spots, I won't spend too much time on because I was, like I said, scraping the end of the barrel, the bottom of the barrel trying to find these guys. It's Mike Conley, who though his county stats haven't been amazing this season, he's just always a connector. When I think about the elite level connectors in the entire league, Mike Conley is up there, so I'm putting him on this list. And then lastly, it is Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson made the last part of this list. And there are a couple people fighting for this. D'Angelo Russell was fighting for this one. First, sure. D'Angelo Russell having a better de uh, defensive season than he's ever had in his NBA career. Um, there, Desmond Bain was also fighting for this very last spot. But I gave it to Jalen Brunson. And those are my tier two all-stars. Uh, hey, none of it even matters. You might disagree. That's completely okay. Let me know in the comment section your favorites or your, your most snubbed out of the top 48 at this point. I'll be in the comment section. And the more I think about it, the more I'm thinking that I'm forgetting like one like super elite guy. It is what it is. I, ain't, I already spent 46 minutes recording this video. So I'm out.